Hello, hello, hello. Um, now we are continuing with question three, November uh, prelim twenty twenty two. There, we're gonna be doing VPM. Interesting topic there. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe. So check. Um, let's go through the statement before everything. It's very, very important. A fifty gram ball is dropped. So already I have seen two important weights so they are saying 50 gram so you know what in physics we don't in physics we don't take grams right the grams are for chemistry so we are, we are going to have to convert it so this one is going to be what 0, 0,05 right kg is dropped so when they are saying it is dropped, it means with the initial velocity of that certain ball, it is what? Zero meters per second. Okay? From a certain height, the velocity time graph represents the motion of the ball as it bounces vertically on a concrete floor. The time of contact during the bounce is 0 0.02 seconds. Ignore all effects of air friction. Sharp. So as I've told you, the initial velocity is zero, and as you can see, it is starting at zero there because it was dropped. Okay, so now let's go to the first question there. So it was bounced, it, 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 it uh, this is where it bounced, and then another bounce. And you know what? This is the maximum uh, height. And it so now 3.9 is saying they define a projectile. I need to know what a projectile is a motion of an object. It is not a motion, J. It is a motion of an object. Object there is a very important keyword. The object whereby the only force acting is the force of gravity. Sharp. There are other definitions, but this one is the easier one. So write down the magnitude of the velocity with which the ball leaves the ground after bouncing. You see? After bouncing. Because check, they said it is dropped from a certain height. So it means to good since I have told you that this thing it is what the maximum height was good, it was up there, then it went down. My figure pants it bounced, right? So as it bounced, it went there again at the same time. So now they're saying write down the magnitude of the velocity with which the ball leaves the ground after bouncing. So I already have my answer there, right? As you can see here, the first answer for the first question or for the second question there. It will be what? 3,43 as I'm given there. 3,3 meters per second. Because check. The ball bounced. It, uh, the ball did what? It was at a certain height, right? So it was it was dropped. So this is it, its first bounce, right? It hit the floor with 3,92 meters per second. But now they are saying it, as it leaves... So leaves is a is a very leaves you see so after bouncing so that's why I'm saying this what three comma four three there so my answer there three point two will be what three comma four three meters per second remember that negative is just for direction so you, I don't have to be busy confusing you all so let's go. Draw a labeled free body diagram showing all the forces acting on the ball at 0, 0,77. This one is easy. Check now. I told you that this is what? The maximum height. So, this is 0, 0,77. So, when it is there up there, the only force acting is what? Force of gravity. And they, are, they confused you all by saying two marks. Okay? So, this is the only force acting there. It is what? Force of gravity. You get the two marks because the ball it is at its maximum height because this is where it is. You see, this is the velocity time graph. I will have to upload a video whereby you see the most the, the velocity time graph and the position time graph because it it is gonna be confusing. So now three comma four, three comma four point one. Uh, use the information given on the graph and calculate what the acceleration of the ball. Now. They want the acceleration. But now I'm going to teach you the simplest. Uh, what? The simplest uh, equation of acceleration from grade uh, 10. 
whereby my acceleration it is what final velocity minus initial velocity uh, over time <laughs> so now you're gonna simply say acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity over delta t so what is my final velocity i told you i told you i told you this is the final velocity of the ball right as it hits the ground so now it means which line i'm gonna put out 3.92 minus what is my initial velocity there it is what zero i told you that this is where the ball was dropped so the initial velocity there it had to be what zero there so my over now the delta t check it out now the delta t as you can see it has to be what 0 0.40 because this is the only time that it it is there so it will put over 0 0.40 take out your calculator type it 3,92 minus 0 over 0 0.40 you'll get what 9,8 so write 9,8 meters per second squared because this is acceleration it is not velocity if it has velocity that's when you're gonna do it yeah you're gonna do that so now check um let's continue the height from which from which the ball was dropped they want the height okay so now i'm gonna simply remove that paper there and i want us to focus here for three point 4.2 so guys as you can see i have my what my final velocity right and then i have my what my initial velocity right so now it's gonna be very very simple for us i'm gonna use you have two methods of calculating it so I'm gonna use my what equations of motion, right? So I'm gonna show you something. I need to know the final velocity that it is what three comma nine two as it was hitting the ground, and then the initial velocity it was it is what zero meters per second, right? And then um your acceleration obvious it is what nine comma eight, and then what is your delta y? is the one that they want right so now i know which formula to use i'm gonna use this formula so it is gonna be what um vf squared it is equal to vi squared plus 2 a delta y okay so now for now you can take downwards as negative or downwards is positive but, but for me i'm gonna take downwards is positive so that i'm not confused so downwards is positive okay so what is my final velocity 3.92 squared it is equals to my initial velocity zero squared because it does drop right so plus two what is my acceleration 9.8 i need to know to value in physics acceleration it is 9,8 meters per square seconds downwards. But now I said I'm going to take downwards as positive. Then times what? Delta Y. And then what is 2 times 9,8? Um, let's take out our calculator. It's very, 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 very important. The calculator there. We need it. 2 times 9,8. It is what? Nineteen comma six. So this zero already it's out. So learn f nineteen comma six delta y three comma nine two squared. Okay. So now let me check this three comma nine two squared, so that you're not confused. I have what fifteen comma three six is four. So let me not confuse you all. Let me simply divide everything by nineteen comma six. Therefore, my delta y it is equals to Take your 3,92 as it is. 3,92 over 19,6. Then what do you have? Hey, 3,92 squared. Hey, hey. 
the knot you have 0, 0.784 as you can see so my delta y date is what 0, 0.784 meters you see simple there you can even use that formula of delta y is equal to vi delta t plus half a delta t squared whatever they have but now simple things i don't ask I don't want to confuse it because there are times that there is 0, 0,40, 0, 0,42, what, 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 so this is the simple method to use, okay? Or you can even use what, the one for area, area under the graph, but I don't worry. Um, Let's continue to the next question. What does it want? I hate these questions. I now... On the set of axes, draw a position time graph. So now, you know what the position time graph it is what? It is like this parabola from your it's like this or like this or whatever. It is like this. So it simply shows, shows you the simplified or uh, it's, it shows you how the motion was. So if my ball went up, it will be like this and then down. Not this one. Because Lana, the ball is going down. But this one is going up. You see, it is confusing. But this one shows you how the ball fell, whatever, they have bounced. You see, simple things. So, for the motion of the ball from 0 seconds to 1,12 seconds. So, use the ground as zero reference. So, indicate the height of from which the ball was dropped and all the relevant times on the T axis on your graph. So, they want the velocity term graph. So it is what? 3,5. 3,5. Simple things. So now, I want you to check something here. Right? As you can see, so for this one, I'm going to take what? Down not as negative because I don't want to confuse because now I'm allowed to take down not as negative or down not as positive. So as you can see, I've calculated my height. I need to know this, this one is the height. I need this one is the time in seconds. So the graph, but oh, hey. Now let's go to the statement. The ball was dropped from a certain height. So this is the certain height I'm talking about. It is what 0, 0,784 that I have there, right? But it was what dropped. So the ball fell down like this okay so now this is the time 0 comma 4 right but it bounced and it was in contact with the with the what with the it, the time of contact was given it was what 0 comma 0 2 so it means what it's gonna be from 0 comma 4 to what 0 comma 4 2 you see it's gonna go up there again is what 0 comma 4 2 and then go up there again you see simple stuff there so learn I have what 0, 0,42 as I was given and then the maximum height so now check I need to tell you the maximum height it is like this but the position time graph shows you how the ball went up and down so Lana it was the maximum height so the maximum height can be somewhere here so 0, 0,77 as I was given there and then the last one it is what 1,12 simple thing you get your max you see how it is simple. So now we can continue. This is the position time graph. That's what you must know. Even in the multiple choice, if they tell you about the position time graph and you see the lines, what about nobody? You're gonna you're not gonna check take them. So now three comma six. Give one weight for the rate of change of momentum rate of change of momentum so this is simple it is simply what the net force because net f it is equal to delta p over delta t this is the change in momentum and this is the time so when they are talking about something in rate that thing is divided by what by time rate of change of momentum you see simple thing there. that's what you know so my answer there will be what net force Three point seven now. Um, let's continue there. Calculate the magnitude of the force exerted by the floor on the ball for the time of contact. 
ah this one is easy guys because now you're gonna apply your neutron's laws and whatever ah now they want the magnitude of the force exerted by the flow on the ball for the time of contact so i'm simply gonna do this f net is equals to my right all right yeah Definitely discuss tomorrow. So what are the forces that are acting there? 